And Jenny, you know, she were expected to hear him talk a little bit more and use this Congress platform to really kind of trumpet his party's achievements. Uh, but there has been a decade of constraint, um, you know, when it comes to tighter state control as well. How would you classify the last 10 years? You know, I think the last 10 years, um, she will rightly trumpet some of his big achievements. They've ended um, extreme poverty in China, and there's been a lot of progress made in terms of, um, you know, stamping out corruption within the Communist Party. But from a societal level, you know, she has also taken China back into an era of ideology not seen since Mao Zedong years. So, you know, um, the party has sort of pushed this ideal citizen on people, which is, you know, Han, heterosexual, married, several children, working in industries that further the party's ambitions. Um, and rather than kind of forward this sort of opening up policy that China had had and further integrate it with the world economy, he's sort of cutting China off more from the world. And that's both in terms of you know, internet controls and physical border closures under COVID. Um, you know, Western ideas such as, you know, feminism has been seen as a Western idea. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been extinguished in that way. And LGBT, LGBTQ rights also have been rolled back. So I think for the average person in China, you know, they've seen a lot of the freedoms they were sort of starting to explore 10 years ago being reined in. And of course, the deal the parties always have with the people is that it will take some of your freedom, but it will make you richer tomorrow. Mm. And now for the first time, we're seeing the economy slowing. These COVID policies weigh on the economy. Exactly. That was the compact, wasn't it? Do you accept that we're going to be curtailing your freedoms in return for you to become more prosperous? And perhaps they didn't want to, in, the, in that compact, that sort of lock-in social contract with many differences here. Um, not have such unbending control perhaps you know that maybe it's gone too far you know and why did he institute it why does he feel insecure or the party feel insecure i suppose i mean it's hard to ever know um why she feels anything but i, I do think when he came to power he saw this country as sort of newfound wealth and um, that was sort of gone through this giant boom era and the fact was that the party was riddled with corruption they were seeing uh protests because of that you know we can famously when people had their sort of their uh, land taken from them, there were these big protests, ethnic unrest. And I think she just felt that he had to consolidate power around the party again, strengthen the party, and also boost patriotism. And that sort of brought China sort of at loggerheads with the Western world in a way that I think people didn't expect she to do. It wasn't kind of in the profile people had of him when he came into power. The, uh, the big take is centered around Chongqing. Ed, just give us some context, significance of why we did this out of Chongqing. Yeah, it's a great question. Chongqing is this sort of giant mega city in the heart of China, and um, it's away from sort of Beijing and Shanghai, so it's kind of more representative of life outside the sort of the elite power centers, but also it's a giant political landmark for Xi Jinping. It was Chongqing where he ousted Bo Xilai, who was his main rival to take uh, the, the top post in 2012 to rule China. Um, the irony is that Bo Xilai, um, who, who famously his wife in the end uh, was embroiled in this sort of murder scandal where she was embroiled in the murder of a, a British uh, businessman. Before that, Bo had been seen as the more sort of ideological politician. He had run this red campaign in Chongqing, reviving Maoist songs and things. She was seen as a reformer. And so when she convinced the party to investigate Bo in relation to his wife's crimes, uh, he was seen as the reformer coming in, but actually he's been the more ideological of the two, perhaps.